Getting into the software side of things or how to print with your Creality High Combo 3D printer, you're going to need some slicer software. In this case, I'm going to recommend the Creality Print 6 software. The slicer software is what's taking the model that we import into it and it is breaking it down into a layer by layer print which is why it's called slicing, and it converts that information into a file which is called a G-code file. And don't worry, you don't have to learn how to code or anything. It does this automatically. All the G-code is is just the name of that file, and it contains a set of instructions for the 3D printer on how to print that object. We need to get the Creality Print 6.1 software. To download it, you'll want to go to the Creality Cloud Dot com website which is Creality's 3D repository website so on the main page you'll see a lot of 3D models I'll show these off in a minute first we want to go to the top banner where it says downloads and we'll go to software and you can also see we have firm firmware and we also have the cloud app as well for the phone but we want software so you'll click on that you have a few different things here because obviously Creality have a lot of different 3D printers and 3D scanners and laser cutters in this case we need the Creality print and you also need to make sure that you're downloading the correct software for your operating system so in my case I'm on Windows 11 so I'm going to download the Windows version but there are also Mac and Linux versions as well the top one should show you the latest release and you can also check by the date here so this current release the 6.1.2.2458 2, 4, 5, release was released in May 30th so pretty recent actually so we're going to just click on that that's going to go into our downloads or wherever your downloads reside on your computer so just let that download and then we'll go through the installation step now in my Windows Explorer I have the download of the Creality Print installation software so you'll double click on it it's pretty straightforward just go through the prompts so we can just start that it will say welcome we go next you can agree to the terms of service select a location that you want to install to in my case I'll just happy with the default and we're going to create a shortcut as well go next and then that will just go through the installation process and we'll just wait for that to finish and then continue from there. Okay, the installation is done. So you should see this window. And in this case, we're going to say we want to run the Creality Print software and we'll just finish and that will then start up. Once the software is launched, you should see something like this. And what you're looking at is just a print bed of a 3D printer. It could be anything at the moment because we most likely haven't set it up for our printer or connected it yet so it's just going to be probably a default print bed but that's what you're looking at and this is where you're going to do all your settings so on the side here you'll have a panel this will control all your layer heights your infills and we'll get into all the details of what those things are pretty soon but that's where all your settings are going to go up in the top you have just a menu so you can go in here to open and import projects etc you can save projects you can go into your preferences if in case there's anything you want to change like units to imperial instead of metric or zoom controls anything like that so you might want to go through the preferences and just set anything that you prefer there's an undo and redo function up the top here as well in case you delete something and need to bring it back. This panel here is going to control your printer profiles. There's a whole bunch of tools here that you may want to go through and play around with. And then finally up the top is the three main panels, which is prepare, preview and device. So generally you move through these three tabs when you're setting up for a print. So your prepare is where you bring in the model, you set up all the different parameters and settings that you need for the print. Preview is where you'll slice, so it generates the G-code. It will give you kind of a preview, obviously, of what the model is going to technically look like layer by layer. And you can, you know, hopefully detect any issues and go back and fix them up and then slice again if you need to. And then device is going to be where you kind of end up at the last step where you actually send the print and you can monitor the device, monitor the print. Uh, if the printer has a camera, you can look at the camera and see the print remotely in most cases, or you can also select different devices as well. So we'll go into each of these tabs as we move through this setup process.
One other main thing, of course, is how to navigate in the software. So using your mouse, you'll see the pointer on the screen. Left clicking, you can click objects or use a window to select multiple objects. Zooming in and out is controlled with the scroll wheel on the mouse. Holding down the right mouse button, you can move around the build plate so you can rotate around objects and see all different size. To pan around, you hold down the middle mouse button and you can kind of grab the plate and move it to where you need to as well. Also in the top here, you'll see a 3D cube representation of what you're looking at. So as you're moving around, you can sort of see what your orientation is in the 3D space compared to that view cube. And also clicking on different areas of the cube will change your view. So if you want a direct front view, you can click on that and just get a straight front view. You can go from an angle or from a top, you can do all that, or you can just go back to the home view as well. Now, one other thing that I should mention, if you do not see this settings panel on the side here, or if you want to hide it, you can click on this little arrow here, which is just going to move it to the side. By default, it should show. In case it doesn't, you'll probably see a little arrow on the side and you can click on that and that'll bring it out. Or if you want to hide it, you can click on that and have it hidden. One last thing on this default view is the two buttons down the bottom here. So you have slice plate and send print. So slicing is what we'll click on to generate the G code and that will move to the preview screen. And send print is obviously when you want to send the 3D print for 3D printing. And there's also some additional options when you click on the arrow for each of these buttons. So you'll say slice plate or slice all if you have multiple plates because you can have projects set up where you have multiple build plates. It doesn't mean your printer has multiple build plates. It just means your project has. So it's just kind of a bit more of a project management and more advanced thing. So we won't really get into that. It's just so you know it's there. And of course the send print button also has some additional options as well, which we'll look at once we get to the actual printing stage. One thing we need to do before we move on to the actual importing model and 3D printing it is of course we need to connect to the printer in our slicer software so that they can generate the correct G code and talk to each other. We do this by going to the device tab at the top. So you can click on that at the moment and especially if it's a default view, you should have nothing there. Now you need to make sure your printer is on and also that it is already connected to the Wi-Fi network. If that's the case, then you should be able to click on the scan add button, and that's going to scan the network and see if it can connect to any devices. And in my case, you can see that it has detected the Creality High 3D printer. So I can click on that and then go to add. It will also have some information like its IP address, etc. And we can add that. You can sort of see it's added it to the background there. So we can close that. And we can now see some information for this printer. So we can see it is our current device. You can detect more printers and add more printers than just the one of them. And you can manage all of them. So you can have a default or current device selected here. It's going to give you some additional details like its IP address, its status. So whether it's printing, uh, it's currently idle. So it's just sitting there not doing anything. Otherwise it would be saying something like printing and it would show you a print file. It will give you some information about filament status and all sorts of things. If you want further information, you can click on details and that will take you to a page showing you a lot more in-depth details for the printer itself. So in this case, it has an onboard camera so we can see the live feed going on here. It's got some information about what it's doing currently, which it's which is obviously idle. It's just sitting there. And you can also do some control here as well. So you can home the hot end and you can control the light through here as well. You can turn the fans on, you can move it around. You can also see things like a print history. And of course, one of the more important things over this side is what filament is loaded. So we can see it's got the red filament that we loaded in just previously. So that's all detected and we can control that either feed or retracting it as well. And it'll give us some nozzle temperatures. So this is a good page to monitor your 3D printer and see if there's anything you need to do. You can even look at previous files that you've printed and right click on them and just export or start printing them straight away as well, which is really cool. To go back to the main page, we can just click on the prepare and that's going to take us back to our main build plate. And what we're going to do is show you how to get our first model, import it and start printing it. 